Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we'll be installing Kali Linux version 22.2 in VMware Workstation Pro on a Windows 11 PC. Before we get started, let's take a look at the minimum requirements. For RAM, the lowest that you can have is two gigs of RAM, four is recommended. For hard disk space, you're gonna want at least 80 gigs, as well as four CPU cores, the Kali Linux virtual machine image file. You're gonna need VMware Workstation Pro 16, and if you don't have that installed, you can check out this video and I'll walk you through the steps. All the steps and tools used in this video will be linked in the description below. If you find this video useful, please consider subscribing to the channel. Now let's install Kali Linux. So I'm at my Windows 11 desktop and I already have VMware Workstation Pro installed and we'll be installing the new virtual machine inside here. But what we first need to do is grab the image. So in order for us to do that, we're going to go over to the Kali Linux website and make sure I link this in the description below. And we want to go to the section for virtual machines, which is right over here. So we're going to go ahead and click on that. And if you scroll down a bit here, you have the 64 bit and the 32 bit version. We're going to be doing the 64 bit version. You can see that we have VMware listed and we have the download link. It's 2.3 gigs in size. So I have to go ahead and click on that and it's going to download a zip file. It might take a little bit of time for that to actually download. What I'll do is I'll jump over to the next step. So the download is now complete. I have the Kali Linux folder over here on my desktop. This is where I downloaded everything and here it is. So I already have 7-zip installed and if you don't have 7-zip installed and you want to know how to do that, you can check out this video and I'll walk you through those steps. So we're going to right click on it, go to 7-zip and extract files here. And now what it's going to do is extract all the files into the same folder. And then what we can do is go ahead and open up our VMware Workstation Pro. Since this might take a few minutes, I'll jump over to the next step. Okay, the extraction is now complete. So as you can see, the original size of this folder was 2.4 gigs when the zip file was downloaded. Now, if you take a look at the properties of the folder, it has ballooned out to 11 gigs. I just want to make sure that you're aware that the file extraction will take 11 gigs in total size once it's complete. Inside this folder, we want to make sure that the VMX file is available because that's what we're going to be pointing to in just a moment. And that is right here. So that's great. And I can go ahead and minimize this window. All right, so we're back at our VMware Workstation Pro dashboard. And what we're gonna be doing is instead of creating a new virtual machine, we're gonna be opening a virtual machine. So we're gonna click on this option. And inside my desktop, I have a Kali Linux folder. So I'm in that right now. And here is the extracted folder that we just downloaded. I'm gonna go inside and there is the VMX file. So this is the one that we wanna load. So we're gonna select that and click on the open button. It takes a few moments here while it loads up. And you can see it already has the minimum requirements. So the memory is two gigs of RAM, has four cores selected and 80 gigs of hard disk space. So once this is all confirmed, you go ahead and power on the machine by clicking on this green arrow. You get a prompt over here to let you know that the, it recognizes that this is a copied version. I'm going to select I copied it and click on that and it'll start loading up the operating system. Let me just move it over here. You can see it better. And I'm going to let the operating system load. It might take a minute or two while we go through that process. Okay, so we're all loaded up and we're ready to log in. At the login screen, we want to make sure that you type in the default username and password. The password you're going to want to change later. So the username is going to be Kali and the password is also going to be Kali. Definitely change this once you've signed in. We're going to click on the login button over here. So that's perfect. We're at the desktop of Kali Linux. What I'm going to do now is just going to full screen it so you can get a better view. And the first thing that we're going to want to do when you're loaded inside is change the default password. It is definitely not secure to use the default one, which is Kali Kali. Get the bar out of the way. And we're going to open up the terminal. And what we're going to do is change our default password. So I'm just going to resize this. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to be doing is typing in sudo space su and then hit enter. And you type in the current password that you have, which is Kali. Hit enter. Okay, and the next thing we want to do is type in P A S S W D space root. So this is to change the password for the root. Hit enter. And now it's going to ask you for a new password. So this is where you can go ahead and type in your own password. And I'll do that right now. And then you have to re enter it. Okay, so my root password is successfully updated. That is definitely the first step that you want to take after you install the operating system. So now that we're done here, I can go ahead and close out of the terminal window. Okay, we're back at the Kali Linux desktop. And if you go over to the menu, you can get all the preloaded tools that are in here for security and intrusion prevention. You can go ahead and start using the tools that are preloaded or add additional tools. And that's it. That's how you install Kali Linux in VMware Workstation Pro on a Windows 11 PC. You can check out my channel, GeekRar Guides, for more installations of different operating systems in a virtual setting. Hope you found this video useful. If you did, please smash that like button. And if you have any questions, you can go ahead and put them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.